Welcome to our classic car now. Tomorrow we're off to our first car show with the 1952 Ford Anglia. So today I'm just going to give it a quick tidy up. It's a bit cooler than it has been of late. So that's good. That's fine by me. So I'm just going to have a quick check over, check tyre pressures, check the oil level, water, etc. Just run it up, make sure there's sufficient fuel in it. Um, but first off, I'm just going to give it a quick clean up. Nothing, nothing too berserk obviously, but just give it a quick clean up because it did pick up a bit of sap from being parked under a tree the other day. What do you want? So uh, I'm just going to wipe that off. Uh, just use a damp sponge, really. Not. I don't want. To, what I don't want to do is get too much water in, sort of inside the doors and in the creases where the wings bolt on places like that. So I'm just going to give it a, a gentle clean, and it's a nice blowy day, so it should dry off fairly quickly. Um, clean the windows, and then really just just have a look around and just see if there's anything else I can do to it, just to make it a bit more display worthy while still being really original and faded. So let's go and find a bucket of water. Right, so I'll crack on with this and report back once it's been rinsed off. No, 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 no. Okay, well that's the uh, wash and rinse down sorted out. Uh, it's just cleaned off some of the sap that was formed from the tree recently. So that's, that's probably a good idea. The sun's coming out, so it'll dry things out quite nicely. Obviously, we're not looking for shine, but just just a quick improvement, really. Quick tidy up. Right, let's have a quick look under the bonnet. Let's see about checking your oil. Just leave that open. You, can, you almost get a bit of water come through where the with any car with a centre hinge bonnet they tend or often tend to drip water through, especially if they've got any louvers on the top panel, then you're really in trouble. So this can be drying off. I will check the oil, there's a the dipstick there. Uh, like I say, this is the 8 horse engine, 933cc side valve. It was enlarged slightly internally and that created the 1172 which went in the Citibum Beg Pop and the Ford Prefect, the E93A and the E493A and uh, a couple of models pre-war as well. I think the CX, was that a 10 horsepower? I think it probably was, so that had the 1172 engine as well as did the E83W van. So there were two versions mainly, and then of course later on you had the 100E that had an 1172 side valve engine, same capacity as this, but it's not the same engine. For example, these do not have a water pump, they rely on thermosiphon for the cooling, whereas the 100E engine has a water pump. You could buy an optional water pump attachment to fit on the 8 and the 10 horsepower pre 100E engines, but um, as standard, they didn't have a water pump fitted. Uh, hotter climates, possibly in Australia, maybe they were a standard fitment. Someone can probably let me know in the comments and in New Zealand. But certainly in the UK, it was not standard to have a water pump fitted on the 8 or the 10 until the 100E came along. So I think we'll just let that dry off. I'll go and find the rag, check the oil, check the coolant level as well. Because like I say, being thermosiphon, you want everything to just be tip-top especially if you're uh, in traffic because part of this car show that we're going to tomorrow involves a short road run so if there's any sort of hold-ups you don't really want a compromised cooling system but first things first let's check the oil and then we'll check the coolant first glance that appears okay so we'll just get out a wipe pop it back in and then just double check to get an accurate level on the oil okay well the oil level checked out okay it was looking a little black so it probably wants an oil change sometime soon so let's have a quick look at the coolant in here note the original brass Enfo that's for English Ford so the original brass filler cap is not a pressurized system so there's no risk of coolant flying out as soon as you remove the cap unlike on later classic cars but it's not something you need to worry about on an Anglia or a Pop 103 that looks like it needs a top up so I've got some antifreeze already pre-mixed over there that I was topping up the Volvo with the other day so I'll go and top this up and then we should be good to go this is the top hose obviously and if you ever wanted a heater in your Ford Pop or your Ford Anglia you can actually back in the day you can actually buy a Ford heater box that fit in here you'd, you'd separate you'd remove a section of the top hose the heater unit which was basically a simple little radiator fit here 
and the, there's like an air intake on the front and an outlet on the back and the blast, if you can call it that, from the cooling fan blasted warm air through and through some ducting into the side of the car. I have got one somewhere and I might well fit it on here, not because I'm expecting it to work particularly well as a heater, but because it would look quite good. A nice little period accessory, so that may well find its way onto the angle here, but for now let's just go and find some antifreeze and we'll top this up. Let's look at a bit more ship shape now. I'll just have to keep an eye on that level just in case it is leaking out somewhere. There are one or two signs of leakage from the head gasket around so it may be that the head gasket isn't quite as good as perhaps it should be um, if you need to take the head gasket off it's not a big deal really just remove the distributor dynamo the optional oil filter over there the bracket for that hangs off a couple of the, the head studs just around here but it's actually not a bad job to get off and I mean the you can see the cylinder head itself is tiny really so if push comes to shove that can always come off you can see that it is stamped if we can just look here EO4A that was the model code actually for the pre-war Anglia the EO4A Anglia and that shows as does the Y that this is an 8 horse head and one of the popular tuning mods back in the day if you had an 1172 powered pop or a Ford Special uh, Ashley or a Falcon Caribbean, something like that. Uh, one of the cheapest mods you could do just to give yourself a little extra power was to fit your 10 horse engine, the 1172, with a cylinder head from an 8, a 933cc engine, because it did up the compression slightly. And it was a simple swap over, nice easy job to do, and it gained you a few, or well, one or two extra brake horsepower probably, but when you've only got brake horsepower in the 30s, every, every brake horsepower counts. So that was one of the popular tuning mods back in the day. Obviously you could get all the aquaplane gear, fancy cylinder heads, carburetors and so on. But if you just wanted to perk up your engine at low cost, you'd nip down to the local scrapyard, find a Ford 8, whiz the head off it, and pop it onto your Ford 10 engine. Pop it on, no pun intended. Right, so the car itself is looking pretty clean now, that's all good. We've checked the oil. These are the sort of checks that you do pretty much before any journey back in the 1950s. You'd check your oil, check your coolant. Um, back then, obviously, you didn't tend to have antifreeze all that often, so you would drain the radiator at night in the winter and top it up with water again in the morning. Same with lorries, they used to do that as well. So, that's okay. Engine oil's okay. I think I'll probably check the tyre pressures. That's the next thing to do. And then we'll carry on and see what else needs looking over. Just have a general look around just to make sure everything's nothing's falling off. And, uh, I mean, we haven't got too far to go tomorrow, but ideally you don't want you want to get there with the same number of parts as when you set off. So uh, it always pays just to check things over a little bit. Right, let's get on with that. At least the dog's quiet now. One thing to point out is the bonnet. I mean, it will go back all the way over, but that does strain the hinge. So if you're leaving the bonnet up for any length of time, always use the prop because that way it doesn't strain this. You don't want this to start splitting because they can start splitting either at the forward or the rearward end and you really don't want that. Right, we're going to have a look at the tyre pressures now. Obviously I could go and get the... you keep away. Obviously I could go and get the compressor and the modern compressor but in the spirit of 1950s motoring we're going to do it the old school way. Now I've got two old tyre pressure gauges here. This is a Kismet. Hopefully we can just about see that. If you stay still I'll move. A Kismet gauge service model, eight pounds to 120 pounds per square inch. It's even got a little filter on here which you can clean out. Hopefully you can see that. So let's see what this particular gauge says for the tire pressures on here. So we'll pop that on there. Right, this is the old school way of doing it. And according to this, the increments are two for every line. So this says we are on 36 psi. And what I'm going to do, because I'm never quite sure about some of these old tyre pressure gauges, how reliable they still are, I'm going to have a go with this one as well. Now this one is in its original box. This is a lovely 20s, you can just about see India Super written on the box. This is a lovely old thing. And we've got, it says the label in here, it's got an adjustable testing foot. The testing foot is swivelly mounted on a turret and automatically locks rigidly in any of three positions. Blah blah blah. So, that's that one. And this... I mean, this is a lovely old thing, this is. 
the India Super Non Skid Tyres pressure gauge service model. That's just a thing of beauty, this is. So, this rotates around. So, we'll just click that round and it just pops into place. And we'll try to see what this particular gauge says. And this one confirms, where are we? There we are. This one confirms that the tyre pressure is indeed 36. So that's good news. There we go. See? So it's just on the 36 mark there. So that would probably do for that. I'll need to check the... So I'll go and find the workshop manual in the handbook and just double check to see what the pressure should be. Let's have a look in this one. Notes the proper old tyre valve caps. Proper brass one, that very nice so we will use the india super non-skid tires pressure gauge service model and see what it says it's just a beautiful tactile thing this is right and this one again shows 36 so it's a little bit over the book pressure but, like I say, it just takes the pressure off all the steering gear, especially if you're turning at low speeds, like we will be doing tomorrow parking up and in this sort of low speed uh, road run that we're going to do. So I'm quite happy just to leave it at that for now. So let's pop the, uh, the valve cap back on. I'll check the tyre pressures at the back. And that's another job ticked off the list. Um, I'll just pop a drop more in this one. Let's, let's go find the pump, see where that's gone. And again, in keeping with period motoring, we've got a 1920s Dunlop foot pump. Lovely old thing, nice and reliable, works great. I've used this for quite a few years now. A Dunlop standard. If there's any interest in old foot pumps, let me know, because there's a few of them dotted around, which uh, might make for an interesting video, if you can stand the thought of watching a video about old tyre pumps. So let's just give this one a quick whiz and then we'll double check the pressure with one of these and then move around to the near side rear and then that job will be done. I should be wearing period footwear for this job really. I think she's all checked over and ready for the classic car show tomorrow. Uh, these sort of checks and preparations, like I say, were pretty standard fare for any pre-journey planning. Back in the 1950s, you'd always check your fluid levels, tyre pressures and so on. And uh, the handbook says very much the same thing. So I think the car's ready now, so it can just be drip drying in the breeze and maybe the sun will pop out a little bit later. And we're ready to go first thing in the morning, all being well. And uh, assuming we get there okay, there'll be a video to follow of us attending our first classic car show with the old Anglia, which I'm very much looking forward to. Well, thanks very much for watching the video. There'll be more videos on the Ford Anglia and other classic cars coming along very soon. Please like and subscribe if this kind of thing is of interest. And let me know in the comments what in particular you're interested in when it comes to old cars and vehicles in general. Cheers for now. Bye-bye.